Hi, Lord Alfred. I'm almost there. You know I'd never be late for an episode of The Children's Corner. When I'm sitting around with my homework all done and there's nothing to do. I call all of my friends. They don't answer the phone. Where have they gone to? Where do you go? I can't believe we're all back together again after all this time. And we're playing the magical couch. All about the towns and the characters that live in the towns that are in the magical couch. Yeah, makes me feel young again. It makes you guys look young again. Take 31. Quiet on the set. <laughs> and a one, and a two, and a three. Let me take you to the magical couch. To a fun world deep inside. Enter the door of the pink bag that says rare To a world that does hide The slouchers live in Slouchville They're mischievous characters that just want to play The Stinkles live in Stankwood Best friends of the slouchers, yes are they The Grocks live in Grokshire, they're blue from head to toe They catch slouches when to our world they go Gangsters live in Frankstown, Frankie is in love With guarding the rope ladder to our world of above let me take you to the magical couch To a fun world deep inside Enter the door of the pink bag that says rare To a world that does hide The Weezers are in Island, Where the who is wisest, wisest and the what's it split too The cave of time is another doorway That brings history back to you the space of the grunts, that's where the grunts live In the hills behind Slouchville, they all love to give We must not forget, the keep flying schlocks They also are in Frankstown and live in a box Of the children's corner located in the world of the magical couch. I'm Sheriff Stephen J, the Sheriff of Slouch County. And I kind of doze off at the piano. You know, I was having a dream about uh, a while back when the band and the deputies, well, the deputies are the band actually, we hadn't played any music for a long, long time and we got together for the first time. I was just dreaming about it. And, you know, <clears throat> I guess I was dreaming about it because. Just recently, matter of fact, they just got back. That's why I'm so tired. I was in the world up above with the deputies, my band, and we plugged in and everything. There was a, a, a place up there that said, you can come practice up here if you want. And we said, okay, fine. And we plugged in the amplifiers a whole bit. Yeah, a little distorted sound because, you know, you, you got to run through these tunes and get everything uh, dialed in a few times before you get it perfect. <laughs>
But at any rate, it was a lot of fun. But right before I left, I was on a stool and I fell off the stool, landed on the left side of my face. This is the true story. And I chipped my bottom tooth, front tooth. Yeah, sure did. I will have to go back into the world up above to have that fixed. But unfortunately, it was like that. Hopefully, nobody saw it. It wasn't too bad when we we're doing this little performance thing we were doing. But um, I would have canceled it and waited until the tooth was fixed, you know, had I seen that coming. But I didn't see it coming. And that's the thing. We can't predict the future. That'd be great if we could. Or can we? Well, I can predict the future if I don't eat pretty soon. Starvation. I'm so hungry. You know, I have a few things over on the preparation table in the preparation area. i like to show them to you. Now that I'm talking about it, because that's something else I was looking into right before I went into the world up above for that practice. Oh, goody. Preparationary means making food. I'm in. Follow me. It's right over here. One minute. That was fun. Fun practice. Now, there have been people for centuries who have claimed that they can predict the future. The ancient Greeks, as an example, they had a high priestess who would give advice and predict the future after going into a trance and supposedly talking to the gods. Now, she would be the mouthpiece for the gods, asking them for the answer to whatever question that the Greeks presented to her, and then repeat the answer that the gods told her to the Greeks after coming out of the trance. The Pythia was the name of the high priestess of the temple of Apollo at Delphi, who also served as this oracle and was also known as the Oracle of Delphi. She was also referred to historically as Pythoness. Now an oracle was a priest or priestess acting as a medium through whom advice or fortune telling was sought from the gods. They were basically the voice of the gods repeating what the gods told them just like the Pythia would do. So what's the difference between a psychic and a medium? Now, they both claim that they can talk to the dead, but only a psychic can actually determine the future from their conversations with the dead, or so they say. A medium cannot. A medium is somebody who can talk to the dead and just repeat what they say at the time. In other words, um, they'll say, oh, your brother is in the room who passed away and, and you can ask him a question and I'll say, well, bro, blah, blah, blah. And the medium says, he says this. So they just repeat back to you. Whereas a psychic, when they talk to the dead, they're actually getting the future, a visionary of a future. And that's the difference between the two of them. Now, fortune tellers go by many names. And there's evidence that these fortune tellers go all the way back to 800 BC. And since that time, different forms and different types of fortune telling have been developed. And I can't get into them all, there's so many of them, but i like to tell you a few that just come to mind. Psychic reading. Now, one form of psychic reading is the reading of your palm or using the stars in the sky, which is called astrology. Cartomancy. That's fortune telling using a deck of cards. Lithomancy. That's fortune telling using 13 or 16 stones. Now, each stone had a value like love, life, magic and other various representations. The stones would be thrown against a wall and how they landed in proximity of each other would determine the fortune which of course was based on how the fortune teller interpreted it. Crystal omency. That's fortune telling with the aid of a crystal globe, a pool of water, a, a mirror, or any transparent object. It's a form of scrying. Which brings me to, you guessed it, a letter chef word of interest. Scry. S C R Y. Scry. Meaning to foretell the future using a crystal ball or any reflective ball or object. Scry. It's a form of crystallomancy. And that's what this is right here. This is, here's a crystal ball, you know, huh? I'm going to tell the future. So I want you to see that crystal ball. I'm going to put this away. Um, I'll put it uh, right over here. Down here. Oh, brother. 
Enough with all the talk. It's lunchtime. So let's continue. Psychometry. That's when the fortune teller claims to obtain details about another through physical contact with one of their belongings. A fortune cookie. A crisp, sugary cookie made from flour, sugar, vanilla, and sesame seed oil with a piece of paper inside containing a fortune. Coffee grounds and tea leaves. Determining a fortune based on how the grounds or leaves float in the cup. Tarot cards. Now these date back to the late 1300s or earlier. These were playing cards and used for games. And I just have to happen to have some right here. Tarot cards right here. No, it wasn't until 1785 that uh, they started being used for fortune telling. And then in 1800s, the gypsies started actually putting their own images, making their own cards. On the, and I don't know, they put out, I don't know how many they put out. They, I don't know, they made it up as they went along, I guess. But they put out a card and go, aha, this card means this. And this card means that. And then they tell you a fortune with it. And let's... Let's uh, not forget the eight ball. The plastic eight ball that was out when I was a kid is actually a fortune telling toy. With the eight ball, you'd ask it a question and then you would turn it over and your answer would float to the top. So let's ask it something. Let's see. Um, is everything I'm telling you true? You can't argue with the eight ball. And lastly, I want to talk about the paper fortune teller. The paper fortune teller, I did that as a child as well. We, we cut a piece of paper into a square and fold it up and we write stuff in it and, and then, anyway, I tell you what, let's make one of those and uh, try it out. And you can make it at home, I'll show you how to do it. But meanwhile, I want you to think about one thing. Do you believe in foreseers? Do you believe in foreseeing the future? Well, whether you believe in foreseeing or not, I don't know, but I don't know either because I don't know. Sometimes things happen. Boy, what a coincidence, you know. But that said, I got to find me some paper and I got to find me a pencil and, uh, and a scissors. And we're going to make one of those paper fortune tellers. And um, scissors are right there, Mr. Dill. You're going to have to leave or move or something, Mr. Dill. Um, so nice to see you again, Mr. Jork. And where is your little friend? Well, it's very nice to see you again, too. Uh, a statue couldn't make it. He's doing some extra work for the sheriff. You know, he's trying to make amends for losing our island. Mm. Yes, and you still have your outfit. You look so uh, official. So tell me, where's that uh, gypsy Selena who owns this here tent? Well, she had some business to attend to in the town of Whimsy. She is thinking about retiring. I enjoy standing in for her once in a while. It's a nice break from being the letter shelf. Shuffle these, please. Thank you. Very nice. I'll get these all shuffled up for you. Uh, so, you're a letter shelf now. Uh, just as you predicted back the first time I saw you, you said uh, you're going to be a letter shelf. Back then, you were an alphabet chef. Uh, well, the crystal ball never lies. Don't be afraid of statue. Uh, I'm excited that this gypsy woman who owns this tent is going to come tell us our fortune and what our future holds for us in this new world to which we have stumbled upon. I hope you're right, Both. I'm not sure I even believe in any of this stuff. Yes, well, statue, you never know what life will throw at you. Uh, I cannot believe that the bank threw us off our island. I said I was sorry, Both. I promise if I ever get another chance, the next time I'll write down some notes so I'll remember to pay the mortgage payment. Hi, I'm Alphabet Chef Becky. I'm here to help you today. Oh, hello, Alphabet Chef Becky. I am Mr. Jork with a D, and this is my friend and confidant, Statue. How you doing there, sister? Oh, it's so nice to meet you. How can I help you today? With all a due respect, Mr. Alphabet the Chef, uh, we were uh, looking uh, for the gypsy owner of this uh, fortune-telling tent uh, so she would uh, tell us what our future was going to be in this world that uh, we've uh, stumbled into. Well, Gypsy Selena couldn't be here today. She had things to do with her family, so I'm standing in for her. And I used to tell fortunes before I was an Alphabet Chef. What's an Alphabet Chef? 
Well, an alphabet chef title is something that's going to be in the past. The ball has told me that we'll all be called letter chefs in the future. No, no. Um, alphabet chef, uh, Becca, I do not think that's what that you meant. Uh, I think uh, what the statue was asking is what uh, does an alphabet chef uh, do? Do D O or do D U E? Do D U E is an alphabet chef word of interest. Do meaning something that is expected or planned for at a certain time, like the baby is due next week. Or as a noun means a payment that is owed to someone, like after this fortune telling reading, a payment for services. Will oh, be due. okay, okay, okay. I understand. I get it. Uh, I just wish the banker would have got it, and uh, we wouldn't be in the situation we're in right now. Uh, all we need to know is what does our future hold in this new world to which we have stumbled upon. Well, let me get dressed properly, and then we'll see what the crystal ball has to say. Okay. I like her bath. Yowza. Oh, statue. Look away. Oh, look at the you! You're all dressed for the occasion. You look like a real gypsy. Now we can believe whatever you tell us about our future. So, can you tell us what does our future say in the crystal ball? It looks like the sheriff is about to give you both jobs. You hear that, boss? Maybe we can make enough money to buy back the island. And what the kind of jobs does this sheriff give us? Well, it looks like you're going to be greeters in the front of Fantasy Forest. Oh my goodness, it's starting to fade. Perhaps we should try the tarot cards. Fantasy Forest? Boy, that sounds familiar. Hey, hey Bob, I think I'm getting homesick. Not the now a statue. Uh, uh, now, please, tell us about these tarot cards. Well, they're not tarot cards. They're pronounced tarot cards. Tarot, T-A-R-O-T, -T, tarot. The T is silent. Even I have friends that pronounce it wrong who should know better. Shuffle these, please. Well, thank you. You're right to that, right to now. Can you believe that, boss? We're going to be greater than did. That was our old job on our island. Remember the plane, boss? The plane? A what? We get there on our own plane. No more talking, statue. I need to know what the cards say. Sorry, boss. I'm sorry about him. Does he get out too much? Okay, that's good. There you go. Let's see what we have here. The justice card. You are escaping from something. People are after you. Interesting. Uh, that would be the process of servers. Uh, I owe a little bit of money on an island I used to own. The fool card. Somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do, which put you in your current bad situation. Oh, that would be a statue. He has a problem with paying the bills, and he's the reason we no longer own the island. The Wheel of Fortune card. You must find this wheel. It will help you solve your current problem. And what is this Wheel of Fortune? It's a wheel that will help you find your destiny. Well, how will I know this wheel? It's a wheel. It's round, probably with spokes, most likely very large. Okay, I get it. It's a wheel. I understand. I'm not a statue. Okay, uh, continue. The magician. You find the Wheel of Fortune and you find the magician. The magician will point you in the right direction. None of this makes any sense to me. You will understand it when it all starts to happen. Now for the last card. The Greeter's card. You must find the Wheel of Fortune and the Magician, or you will forever be Fantasy Forest Greeters. Find the Wheel and you find your answer, and all your problems will be solved. Okay, so that's it? That's all for now. The cards have spoken. Okay, well, it's a very interesting reading. Uh, I will take your advice and look for this wheel. 
I'm not sure what exactly what I'm looking for. It's but a I will wheel. It's round and big oh, okay. with spokes. I get it, I get it. I understand what is going on. Uh, well, thank you very much. And uh, I guess I'll be on my way. Well, you're welcome, but that'll be five Karunas. Oh, Karunas. Uh, I'm a little short on Karunas. Uh, do you take a post the checks? Mm. No, 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 no. Those are a bank of rumors that wasn't to me. That was a statue. I, I, and I, I, you can trust me. I'm, a, I'm good for it. Uh, where is it? The checkbook. I got it. Got it with me. Well, everybody, I got it. All stuff we need to make a paper fortune teller. Now this is 18 inches by 12 inches, so we're gonna have to make this 12 by 12 to make this work. So we got our six-inch ruler. So I'm gonna have to make a mark here. Six inches. Make another mark here. And six inches. Now that should be 12 inches. So at our little mark that we made, we're going to fold the paper on that mark and we're going to cut it. Make sure the edges of the paper line up so it's nice and even. It's not a crooked cut. Okay, there you go. Make a little crease here. Crease it up. Flip it over the other way. We'll do it again. All right, that's good. Now, we'll cut it. All right, good enough. Now we're gonna fold it, a bunch of folds, because we're gonna make triangles. All right, we fold it this way once, this way, okay? Now we're gonna fold it the other way. Now we're gonna fold it diagonally like this, and we'll fold it diagonally the other direction, like that. So we're making folds in the paper. Now we're gonna fold it, each corner, into the middle, like that. And now you have a square. Now we're gonna turn this over, and we're gonna fold it again, like this. Now once you have done that, and folded it all, you're gonna turn it over, like this. Okay, so there you go. So now we have to write colors on these each of these four squares. And make sure the color you pick, each color has a different amount of letters in it. You wouldn't want to use black and brown because they each contain five letters. So once you've done that, you want to turn this over and you see all these triangles in here? You're going to want to uh, number those triangles one through eight. And there you go. Now, under each one of these tabs that you put a number, you're gonna put a fortune. Then you would fold it in half. See how I fold it in half? Fold real good. And you put your fingers in it, okay, like this. You gotta work it a little bit because it's a little stiff because you just made it. And then you put it like this, and there you have it. So that's a paper fortune teller, right there, cool. Now I happen to have made one earlier, right here, all done. So what do you say I try it out on me. So let's see, my favorite color is red, so I'll pick red. R E D. I look inside and I find a number inside there that I like, and let's say number three. One, two, three. And then I pick another number, that will be my fortune. I'll pick number six. And it says, the show is going to be over soon. Oh, what, what time is it? Just a minute, let me put it down. Look at my watch. Um, let's see. Oh, where did the time go? <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. All right, I am gonna have to get going because it's really late, I've run out of time. All right, but I wanna thank you for joining me today and listening to that really brief history of fortune telling and learning how to make a paper fortune teller. And it was great seeing you. And look forward to the next time we all get together on the Children's Corner. What, if I, what would happen when I put the fire? Where do you go? Where do you go? To the Children's Corner. Where do you go? We're gonna go to the Children's Corner. Tell me where do you go? Go. We're gonna go to the children's corner. Just where do you 
gone. 